Next up on Pro Soccer Talk, we're going to focus on three things we've learned over the last week in the Premier League. So head over to Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com. With these three lads here, we'll have three things on each Premier League game. Analysis-wise, uh, we're not scared uh, and shy of giving our opinion. Uh, I'm going to open this one up. I think the title race is open. That's the thing I have learned over the last seven days. And wide open, in fact. I think any team from the sort of traditional big six, and I'm going to chuck Everton into the mix as well, because even though they didn't play well against Liverpool, they still like, ground it out, really, and got a draw there. And I think it's very even. Man City are the favourites for me. I like the tactical flexibility they showed against Arsenal with the, you know, 3-4, uh, whatever you want to call it. They were flipping between back three and back four when they had the ball, when they didn't have the ball. Uh, I think Ruben Diaz and Nathan Ake make a big difference to this Guardiola side. So... They'll be my favourites, but I think we are in for, I'm going to say it, the most exciting title race we've had in probably nearly a decade. Because usually it's a two-horse race, maybe even a three-horse race. Um, but realistically, I think there's five or six teams who, going into January, will still be in the Premier League uh, title hunt. So, Andy, what did you learn this weekend, mate? I know there's a lot out there, but uh, it certainly certainly seems like we're now in the crux of the season where we're starting to find out a lot more about these teams with a bigger sample size. Yeah, I think I learned that it's time to give Aston Villa a little bit of love and respect for what they've done to start this season. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, you know, th there is one team in the Premier League now with a 100% record. Everton dropped points on the weekend, and, and, it, and it feels like no one is talking about them. And I think it's because, okay, well, it's Aston Villa. They're going to fall away. Eventually, they'll be down where they belong at the end of the season and all these things. But every time they play, the conversation after the game is always about the other team. And, and I find that a little bit interesting. They beat Liverpool 7-2. Uh, the champions are falling apart. They beat Leicester 1-0 uh, this weekend. Well, they didn't have Vardy or Soyuncu or, or, or Ndidi. Uh, okay, fine. They, they still beat them. They beat Fulham 3-0. Fulham might be the worst team in Premier League history. They beat Sheffield United 1-0. What's wrong with Sheffield United? It's never about Villa. Uh, the only team that scored against them this season is Liverpool, and they scored seven against them. So I just want to say, Aston Villa, we see you. Uh, keep it up. Fair play. Nick, what did you learn, mate? I got a theory, guys, on the big six, big six weirdness, and I think it's down to center backs, and let me explain that. Over the past couple of years, we've seen changeover or uncertainty pretty much everywhere. Lynchpins are gone for Tongan, uh, Kachelny, company, even Van Dyke now, uh, and almost every team has a young cog sorting it out. Uh, Ruben Diaz, Gabriel, and let's not forget uh, Davinson Sanchez, I believe 24 years old as well. So plus whatever's happening at Chelsea and Manchester United. And this is why what I learned this weekend, I'm not any less optimistic about Spurs despite 3-3 at West Ham because the argument that Jose Mourinho teams usually defend better is still valid and perhaps underlines the point. Uh, also, my favorite stat of the weekend, you guys know I love the advanced stats, uh, the XG numbers, expected goals on Harry Kane. Uh, they're not he, – he's doing fine. Like it's – he has the same amount of goals more or less than he's expected to get. And he's producing at this level, which means the performances have been legit. So um, center backs worried across the league with the big boys, Tottenham, not as worried. Well, yeah, I didn't think we'd be saying that about Tottenham after that performance this weekend, especially in the last eight minutes. Andy, I know we're going to do our best not to bring that up as much, but <laughs> it, um, yeah, a pretty, Pretty incredible week to learn a lot about these teams. And I think now we're starting to see general patterns emerge about uh, if we're concerned about them defensively, concerned about them going forward uh, and what we're going to do. Uh, and basically, I think most teams right now are still trying to figure it out, but we are in a much better position to analyze the bigger picture. And we're only five weeks into the season. So I think uh, it's really showing that progression from Project Restart into the new season and showing that a lot of what we knew about these teams, we kind of knew it uh, going into this campaign. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe. Make sure you subscribe to watch highlights all season long and always join us every weekend at 7 a.m. on NBCSN for Premier League mornings. Plus, make sure you subscribe to Peacock Premium as well, where you can watch exclusively live 175 games and same-day on-demand replays of all 380 Premier League matches as well.